Hello, everyone. Welcome to Inside the District, uh, look behind Millville Public Schools. So I am school superintendent, Dr. Matt Mazzoni, and hopefully you were able to catch our last episode where we highlighted Millville High School. And our, our goal for the entire year is to showcase a school a month. And this episode, we are going to uh, highlight Lakeside Middle School. And we have a special guest joining us today. And we have Principal Amanda Gaunt joining us and also instrumental music teacher Erica Biaselli. So we have fun-filled day planned for us. So we're going to get it started. So we have Mrs. Gaunt joining us. So thank you, Amanda, for being here. Hi, Dr. Mazzoni. Good to see you. Good to be here. Yeah. So, you know, I'm, I'm starting in the district. Uh, this is my third year. And when I, prior to that, I was assistant superintendent. And automatically, I hear about Amanda Gaunt, the things that she's doing at Lakeside. So yeah. you came in same time as me. Yeah. Um, I remember meeting you at the board meeting that day. And, you know, you've done a lot of wonderful things over there. Yeah. So I think it's important to have you on here. We're going to unpack the vision, mission, those activities that you're sure. doing. But first, Tell us about how you got here. So what's your educational uh, journey through that lead you to the principal position? Absolutely. I started at uh, Rowan University for my bachelor's. Uh, from there, I pursued my master's in special education. Um, and in 2012, I joined the Millville Public School District. Um, I was a teacher at Millville High School, uh, worked in several different programs, resource room, ICS, um, and got to work with a, a ton of wonderful teachers over at the high school. So that was a really uh, great experience for me. I got to be senior class advisor, uh, coach cheerleading, um, and felt so uh, involved in that community. So how many years did you teach special education? Uh, six years. Six years yep. teachers. All right. So mm -hmm. I was a special ed uh, yeah. teacher too. So you were in class resource? Yes. I did a combination of things. Okay. Resource room. I did a college prep course right. um, and a lot of resource room. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. So then how'd you take that step? Many of us, we know they call administration is the dark side, but here in Millville, <laughs> it's not the dark side, right? Yeah. But how, what made you want to become that school leader? Um, I, I work very closely with uh, Mrs. DeRose, um, you know, our assistant superintendent, uh, 6 to 12, um, and started doing a lot of internship hours with her. Right. I joined the NJXL program uh, to start pursuing my certification for principals and uh uh, supervisors. Um, and through that experience, working with the vice principals at the high school and Mrs. DeRose, um, I just saw that that would be a great next step for me. Right. Yeah. And I'm sure it's been going well. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. It's been a lot of fun. <laughs> so thank you for sharing that, Amanda. Now let's look at talking about the vision and mission. So sure. uh, you've done, like I said, a lot of great things. So let's look into that a little yeah. bit. So talk about that vision, what, what it looks yeah. like at Lakeside. So, you know, our goal is always to empower our students uh, to be successful academically and socially. Um, you know, so so working closely with our administrative team, I started as a vice principal at Lakeside in 2019. Um, you know, for three years, I was the vice principal in eighth grade. Um, so I worked very close with our team of teachers in eighth grade uh, to make sure that we were pushing our students to strive um, to be academically successful um, and support them in social emotional ways as well. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. And then w w let's look at the mission statement. So yeah. I know we have a slide on that. Let's take a look at that. So talk about was this how was this developed with your staff? Uh, yes, it, right. it has been an ongoing process that we, yeah. you know, constantly are reflecting on. Um, and since becoming principal in 2002, um, you know, we spent a lot of time during our summer trek preparation, um, our summer admin meetings, uh, looking at our vision and mission statements uh, to make sure that we are, you know, upholding a safe and orderly campus, uh, that we're enriching our environment that's fostering teamwork. As I know we'll talk about a little bit later, teamwork is such a huge uh, piece of of our success at Lakeside, um, making sure that we are providing the high quality ex instruction that our students deserve, um, and then also implementing programs and activities that will enhance their academic experience every single day. Beautiful. And I know you brought up what Summer Trek is. So mm -hmm. just for our audience, Summer Trek uh, has been historically in the district. It, it went away for a little bit, and now it's back as a whole from uh, kindergarten to yeah. eight, uh, to 
uh, high school. And what that looks like is two days. I think we did we do one day this year. Two or days. Two days. Yep. Two days of uh, where our school leader teams come together. So we have a, a number of staff members, the leaders in each of the building, and it's well represented from administration, teachers, and that's a time that we're talking about. Uh, just mm-hmm. what Mrs. Gaunt said, vision, mission, and then those steps that uh, set those expectations for our students. Yeah. So it's about getting off on the right foot, it and that's is. so important in the start of especially a middle school. Yep. How many how many middle school students are right now at uh, Lakeside? We're just around 900 students. 900 yeah. students, yes. grade six through eight. <laughs> yeah. And I can smile at that because I was a middle school yes. principal. So I, I know it is, people say it's challenging and all that, but the energy is amazing. Right? Absolutely. Every day, it's yes. fun to be in a middle school. And Summer Trek really gives us an opportunity to reflect. Um, we take staff surveys from the end of the year. Um, we talk with our student leaders to really focus on what we can improve on each year. And so Summer Trek is just so valuable. Um, We usually have about nine staff members that participate with our administrative team to reflect on, you know, those areas in need of improvement. Um, And then we we come up with a strategic plan on how we're going to implement that and continue to improve at Lakeside Middle School. Wonderful. Yeah. And I know that's already reaping a lot of benefits. Definitely. So the one thing that you, uh, the accolade that your team just received Mm -hmm. was uh, National School of Character. Character. Yes. So if you want to talk a little bit about that. Yeah. That designation. Um, we were very proud uh, to receive that recognition in May. Um, we we work very closely as a team uh, to demonstrate how we are showing those 11 principles um, that are, are necessary to be a National School of Character. Um, we take a very comprehensive approach uh, to creating a safe um, and supportive environment for all of our students. Um, that goes without saying our PBSIS team and our PBSIS coordinator coordinator Lida Stroop does a wonderful job um, with our universal team you know focusing on how we can get kids in school excited about being in school and then recognizing those behaviors um, that we want to see each of our students you know showcasing every single month and and then so I know the next slide we're going to talk about we have um how what's it look like the recognitions for students the monthly yeah. recognition and even from how that's incorporated in that bigger umbrella of positive behavior supports in schools absolutely so um, on our daily morning announcements we not only reiterate our building wide expectations we also talk about the monthly character trait and how um, our teachers can recognize students for demonstrating that on a daily basis we use the hero platform uh, to allow teachers to award port points to students Students uh, for showing, you know, uh, respect or responsibility each month, um, and then that's also tied into our student of the month recognitions that we do, um, you know, each each month for our students. Yeah. So, how long has uh, the platform Hero been in place? Uh, it's been in place for three years. Okay. Three Did years. Did you use that at the high school as well? Uh, the, yes, they're you using did. that as well. Did, they they just started there? to oh, not okay. when I was there, but okay. yeah, they are using it there now as well. So, what was it? What was behind bringing Hero? Just supporting our PBSIS program in a a more streamlined, you know, manner. Um, It's a digital platform where our teachers can quickly check off um, each of those characteristics that they're seeing in their classrooms um, and celebrate it. And then it gives us the data to support those recognition pieces. And and I've, I've been speaking, you know. I'm data driven and we're always having these conversations like how can we be better? Sure. And I know it becomes wearing at times. So I have to stop also and recognize and celebrate those successes. So uh, it's gr- great to hear that's happening yeah. at Lakeside. So again, I know you push uh, along with your team to make sure you have the best environment possible. But the important factor in that is celebrating student success. Absolutely. Uh, and along with staff. Yeah. So I know. Y- I think one thing I do want to ask you about, maybe we didn't talk about, was how, you know, you did some pretty amazing activities to, like, uh, celebrate staff. Yeah. And you had some of those activities that you planned that were very creative. Can you touch base on some of them? Um, And it ties back into our character, you know, national school character and recognizing each of those monthly character traits. Yeah. Um, So each of our staff members are given two postcards a month. Right. Uh, They're mailing them out to students that are again, demonstrating those characteristics of the month. Um, And then when students return them, they are entered into a monthly raffle. um, And we we draw three 
postcards. Um, and so both the teacher and the student get recognized. They're getting a Wawa gift card. They're getting a certificate. Um, and another thing that we're just promoting all the great things that are happening there are staff and students uh, that are really buying into supporting this character education. And folks, that's why uh, Mrs. Gaw and Lakeside uh, Middle School was recognized as a national school yep. of character. So, you know, magnificent all the things that you're doing over there. And we're just touching on the surface of the great happenings at uh, the middle school. So let's shift gears and talk about the AVID program. And what is AVID? I know it's been in the district for a long time, and it's about preparing our students uh, for college and career, making sure that organization is set. So, you know, I know you've probably seen it. um, You've been involved with it for quite some time. So you want to talk a little bit about it? Yeah. Um, So our AVID program, uh, we are a National uh, Demonstration School, which is something that we're very proud of. Uh, We're starting the revalidation process for that. Mm -hmm. Um, But AVID really focuses on uh, showcasing college readiness for our students. We are taking our middle school students on college tours to actually see what the campuses look like. Um, You know, the AVID program closely monitors their academic performance and how they can improve um, across all their core content classes. Um, And it, it also increases is the rigor. So when they're in their AVID elective, they are reviewing their grades. They're having these Socratic seminars where they're talking with their peers um, and providing peer support um, so that they're they're learning together and, and can improve as a team. I, I want to stay with the college tours. Yeah. I, I think that's a huge proponent. It's when you look at our role as education uh, leaders, one of the things that we pr- need to provide the students is access. And for you to have college tours for students in middle school, you're giving them an opportunity that maybe they never seen before. So anytime you can take a child and put them on a college campus, that dream is going to become reality to them. So they're going to say, I belong here. I want to be here. So thank you for doing that. And I hope that we can continue to grow that. Absolutely. So that, that has to be one of our goals. Yeah. And we actually have tutors, um, avid tutors that are coming back that went through the program yeah. themselves as middle schoolers um, and have now graduated college or are in college and are coming back to speak to our students and say, this is why I, I've gotten to this point. This is why what you're doing now is so important and it will benefit you in the future. Awesome. So let's... Um, I believe what's our next slide that we have because are we going to demonstration night and talk a little bit about like the avid family night and what that oh, looks like? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we hosted a, an avid an avid family night um, where several several of our families were able to come in, uh, meet with our avid uh, site coordinator uh, Jen Shelton. Uh, she gave them an overview of the program, discussed some of the expectations, some of the things that they have to look forward to. Uh, the families got to participate in a craft, um, and then there was a uh, bingo that got everyone up to go and, and speak with one another and get to know uh, the families that were there that night. So it was it was really great to see. Wonderful. Yeah. So awesome. Thank you for sharing about AVID. A lot more excitement happening at Lakeside. So yes. all this is happening and then you were fortunate enough to uh, have a $1 million grant that was, um, you know, that we were able to uh, that was provided to yeah. us. We jumped on it, right? We, again, we had an opportunity uh, that we were able to capitalize on it. So yeah. we had interim superintendent, Dr. Scott McCartney in. Uh, this was in July, I believe. Yes. And I still remember I was away for a week with my family vacation. I came back next thing you know, I hear we have a million dollar yeah. grant <laughs> and we have a new program running. Yeah. So once again, there was an opportunity that we were able to jump on. So. Talk to us a little bit about this lightning learning team, this yeah. whole new approach to learning, uh, teaching and learning. Yeah, and it's obviously a huge priority uh, for us to get our students in school on a regular basis. Um, so this program and this partnership with NOLA Education has provided us an opportunity to really uh, focus in and provide supports to uh, a lot of our students who have struggled academically and with attendance. Um, it is a much more hands-on approach to learning. Uh, they're still in a core content team, which we model throughout the entire building, um, but through the 
this partnership and through this grant, uh, we were able to uh, provide new furniture, new technology, new manipulatives. Um, and it is really um, starting to show the students that they can, you know, stay aligned with the curriculum and, you know, the state standards, but effectively learn what they need to in a different way. Great. And yeah. I know we, as I talked about earlier, about celebrating student success. Yes. Uh, so we had a ribbon cutting ceremony that yeah. happened a week ago, and you can see some of the pictures that. And talk to you, talk a little bit about the student ambassadors and yes. the job that. So not only the work that they're doing. Uh, day in and day out in the program, but yeah. even now you put them in such a leadership role as yeah. ambassadors on that day. Um, and, and this, again, speaks to the team of teachers that we have working with our Lightning Learning team. Um, so, you know, when we had the opportunity to have the ribbon cutting, uh, we sat down with a team of teachers and identified student leaders that are, you know, um, really excelling in the program, are showing up more than they did in previous years, um, and are, are being more successful academically as well. Um, and then we sat down and had a conversation with them about how we see them as leaders in, in the school and in, in this program. Um, and they were all so excited to take on this opportunity. And I was so proud and so impressed with what they were able to do on the ribbon cutting day. Uh, they spoke with our guests, they led them through tours, um, and then they really provided a student perspective, um, which is so much more valuable than hearing it from me uh, um, you know, or any of the teachers, they were actually sharing their success stories. Um, and again, I was so proud of them that day. Wonderful. Yeah. And, I, you know, give kudos to you because uh, I know you recognize your teachers and the students for their work. And when I, at the ribbon ceremony, I, I was able to talk to the teachers and yeah. say, you know, you're the driving force behind 100%. this. But they did stop me and say, you know, but I also want to give credit to Mrs. Gaunt mm -hmm. because she's so supportive of us through this process and making sure that we have the professional development and Absolutely. all the materials. So it, it takes a village to it make does. sure we get this up and running. So thank you for yeah, that, along absolutely. with your teachers. Now, we're going to shift to uh, the team's model. Yes. And this was implemented, was it three years ago or yes. two? This is our third full third, year. Of it. Third full yeah. year, yeah. So when I walked in as assistant soup, you shifted to this team's yes. model. And I know, uh, you know, starting as superintendent here on September 1st, I, I, the, probably the number one thing that I'm told, not asked about, is make sure you maintain teams. Yes. We need to maintain yes. teams at the middle school. Yes. Uh, and, the, and everybody's referencing from a budget standpoint. Yeah. So there's a buzz around teams. So talk to, tell the audience what is teams, yeah. right? And you, what, what do you see as the effectiveness of it, of, Absolutely. of its implementation? So within each of our grade level um, you know, sections throughout the building, we have core content teams. In sixth grade, we have three. Um, seventh grade, we have four. In eighth grade, we have four. Mm -hmm. um, and so what we've done by creating this team of ELA, science, social studies, and math um, is create this community within the school. Um, so those core content teachers are meeting with their students, are you know collaborating with parents, are communicating with parents, communicating with students, and they're creating this small community where their students are now um, flourishing because you know they're not having to travel across this huge big building. Right. Um, and they have four teachers that are constantly working together to make sure all their students are, are successful. Yeah, and I, while you're talking, it just yeah. brings me back to, to when I was in middle school. And you know, m that traditional middle school uh, schedule is a bell rings and kids are running yeah. from one class to the next yeah. and everybody is in isolation. Yeah. But we know we need to do community together. So that's Absolutely. an important part. And I love using the word team just like yeah. you do. And yeah. that's so we are better together. And the kids have those supports in place. And when there is a concern or a challenge with a student and that needs additional support, yeah. it's not just one teacher doing it, but we can pull all yes. of our resources together to support that. Mm -hmm. And you even have a vice principal yes. tied to yep. uh, each grade level, school counselors. Absolutely. So you have all those supports in there. Yeah. So I, I'm sure that this is a model that um, will stay in place as, yes. as long as we can. Yeah, it's wonderful. Uh, see, look how quick. See, I said not. I, I wasn't uh, saying it's automatic, right? Yeah. I, it's our goal to make sure we have that because yeah. somebody's going to call me on yeah. that one day. 
<laughs> so great stuff. Yeah, and uh, with our teams, we've been able to implement so many other building wide expectations and procedures that continue to support our success. Um, you know, we have school wide expectations that are read every single morning on our morning announcements. Yeah. They're posted in each classroom. Um, we have students wearing ID badges now. Uh, there's transition plans within the building. Our teachers escorting students to and from the cafeteria out to dismissal locations as well. Um, because again, safety and security is always our number one priority um, and making sure that our students and staff feel safe every single day. And I do believe that Teams is playing a huge part in that. Wonderful. And then, you know, we had a conversation earlier this week about smart pass. Yes. So yes. another new idea, right? Mm -hmm. So talk to talk to uh, our community a little bit about what is smart pass and how it's been uh incorporated into the school. Yeah, and our goal is to streamline so much of what we do. Um, so with Teams, um, you know, we were like, what, what's the best way uh, to eliminate, you know, the, the handwritten bathroom passes yeah. and all of that? Um, and so SmartPass has really provided us uh, the data to know, you know, high frequency areas in the building, uh, provide a safer experience when students are transitioning to our lavatories. Um, and it's giving us data to have those conversations with individual teams. Teams, um, about you know frequency um, also provide that information to our security team so that they are actively monitoring the halls knowing who should be moving when they should be moving um, and again just giving us a perspective of where our students are at all times in the building great stuff yeah so last thing that we're going to talk about is and you this has been in the, pretty much the um threaded throughout our conversation sure. is about community yeah. it's about teams yeah. right and you have stretched it further than just within the school yeah so it's about how do we do these partnerships with our families yeah how do we reach our families in this and one of the things that you've incorporated is the parent teacher conference that's yes. going on right now yeah. right this afternoon this yeah. afternoon yeah. so why don't you touch base about uh, that partnership and what the parent teacher conferences look like at middle school absolutely um, so we did decide last year um, with our team's model that incorporating parent-teacher conferences into our schedule would be so beneficial. Um, what we've been able to do with implementing the parent-teacher conferences um, is providing parents an opportunity to sit down with the entire team, the core content team of their teachers um, at one time. Instead of sitting with this teacher and then another teacher, they're all in one room um, ready to discuss. They're, they're providing the data, they're reviewing grades, they're reviewing attendance, um, but it, it's just you know a good opportunity for them to have that sit down um, conversation with the team of teachers and, and make sure that their students are succeeding. And then if they need additional help, communicating that in that setting as well. Wonderful. Yeah. All right, Miss Gaunt. So that was a lot of wonderful <laughs> things. Uh, thank you for yes. sharing that uh, with our audience. So we're going to go to commercial and we're going to come back and we're going to talk about our music program at Lakeside with Miss Erica Biaselli. So come on back shortly. Thank you. Allen Associates is a family owned and operated full service agency managing a broad base of clients in the New Jersey area. Allen Associates has been a leader in health benefits and financial services including health, prescription, life insurance, pension, 401k plans and estate planning. With more than 60 years of experience and a staff of highly trained and dedicated professionals, Allen Associates is noted for its ability to build strong, long-term relationships with our clients and the communities we serve. Give them a call today at 856-692 2250. Allen Associates, your complete health and financial services, Vineland, New Jersey. Hello, my name is Craig Atkinson and I am president of the Millville Thunderbolt Club. The mission of the Thunderbolt Club is to enhance the athletic experience of Millville High School student athletes. We provide a myriad of services for these athletes, including end of year recognition banquets for all teams, stipends for teams and individual athletes, college scholarships of $35,000 per year, meals for special events, as well as hosting the Mike Trout Millville Thunderbolt Club Golf Tournament and the Millville Sports Hall of Fame. Please visit our website at millvillethunderboltclub.com for additional information.
Welcome back to Inside the District. Again, I'm Matt Mazzoni, Superintendent of Schools, and today we are highlighting Lakeside Middle School. And we're gonna continue, so we spoke to Miss Amanda Gaunt, and now we are turning to Miss Erica Biaselli, and she's gonna talk a little bit about our instrument program from the band, everything about instruments. So uh, welcome, Erica, to Thank the you. show. Uh, first, I think it's important to share, give us your background. We, we, how'd you start in music to become yep. an educator? So I went to University of Delaware, graduated in 2009 with a music education degree. Got a job actually right here in Millville, 2009. I was teaching at Memorial High School and Lakeside. Uh, taught 8th through 10th grade band, um, did the marching band for six years, did jazz band, did music appreciation. When the full-time job became available at Lakeside, I was like, middle school is like my dream mm -hmm. job. So I was like, gotta go for that and got that. So now I teach 6th through 8th grade band. We have concert band, symphonic band, which is like an advanced band, 6th grade band, jazz band. So if it has band in You're the in name, it. it's me. <laughs> yeah. I love it, Erica. Oh, cool. So then what was the passion of you become, like, getting into music? So was this something that started at a young age? Uh, kind of accidental, I guess. My sister had a flute. So when the time came to like sign up for band, my mom said, that's what you're playing because we right. can't afford any other instrument. I said, okay. And I just ended up being really good at it. Um, continued through elementary, middle school, high school, did everything music related that I possibly could. Um, I loved all of my music teachers throughout my years. Um, and that just seemed like the best job ever, like to get to play music and help kids to do that as well. So that's where that stems from. So what age was it then when you started? 10. 10 years old. Yeah. So I tell the kids, oh, I've been playing flute for 28 years. And they look at me like, wait a second. And they're doing math. <laughs> yeah, they're doing math. Yeah. Oh, they're yeah. being respectful. They, they don't want to ask you your age. Oh, no, yeah. they, they ask. And, <laughs> and I ask that question because, you know, uh, my wife and I, we have mm -hmm. four little girls. Yep. And it's like, I want them to play an instrument. But when do you start mm -hmm. that process? Uh, with my own children, I'm going to start as soon as possible. As soon Piano's as possible. the way to go. Piano. Yeah. Because okay. the band instruments are just too big for little kids. But mm -hmm. like that is probably the best thing you could do um for child development it like is a workout for the entire brain so i'll probably start mine at five five six. all right I yeah get a jump on this <laughs> yep and uh let's lead that into the approach that you take mm -hmm. with our students uh maybe they're coming to the middle school and want to get involved yeah. and they don't know anything about an instrument so how do you get them? How do you inspire them? And what's that look like? Well, a lot of our kids start at the elementary level. Some right. start in fourth grade, some start in fifth grade. I have had sixth graders start. Um, so a lot of them, they fall in love with it right from the beginning with their elementary music teachers. But I make sure that I kind of bridge the gap between elementary music. So I always go every spring, I visit all the elementary school teachers, I visit with the kids, I go to their concerts, I try to hear them as much as possible because they really appreciate that when you have that like connection. So the first day of school, they come in and they're like, I know you. Yeah, I'm like, you great. do, I've seen you. Um, so I make sure I make those connections with the elementary school teachers. And then I also have connections with the high school directors as well. So they come down and visit. So we spanned mm -hmm the whole like fourth or 12th grade. So I think that just being visible to the kids is a huge, huge deal. Right, mm -hmm. and th so I call that always vertical articulation. Mm -hmm. So we have to have those conversations yep. to continue the growth of our programs. And we know uh, that our band is recognized as the top in the state, once again, mm -hmm. state champion. So yeah. uh, so we gotta make sure you're getting a sweatshirt and I tell Rob all the time, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah, he sh I'm sure he thanks you for that. <laughs> yeah. uh, so a little bit, you know, I've been a, I was a principal for a while and mm -hmm. you know I would be in I had a colleague who was another elementary principal and we wanted to start a gifted and talented program that focused on just not uh, student uh, academics yeah. but it was how do we bring in the arts so bring in instruments into that program because when you read the research it's always going to lean towards there. it's yeah. not just about students learning about reading writing mm -hmm. and math but how do you incorporate that those arts and one is playing instruments yes absolutely so yeah. i'm sure and the conversation always with you know is students are being pulled from band you know, and I'm sure you have all the data to support that usually our students that are participating are our highest achieving they students. Are, yeah. So where do you see that? So I want you yeah. to advocate right now oh, about, all right. tell yeah, me right. about like how important a music yes. program is, uh, you know, to a school. To kind of sum up the research, because there is a lot, yeah. um, playing a musical instrument is a full brain like activity. Yes. So really it like connects, um, 
this is going to sound super sciencey, but connecting your neural pathways between the two parts of your brain, it strengthens strengthens those connections. So by playing a musical instrument, you're not only strengthening playing a musical instrument, but your brain, which right. will help you in any subject whatsoever. Um, to me, the reason that band is so important is because of the life skills it teaches. And a lot of those life skills were actually in our mission statement. Um, collaboration with others, we have to work as a team. It's like the one place where like, we're never against each other. Like we're all trying to, to help each other be better. Yeah, right. So that's like a huge one. Um, building confidence in our students, having to get on stage in front of hundreds, sometimes thousands of people yeah. our kids do, that's really scary for yeah. them. So it builds that confidence that they can do this. They can go up there, they can perform, um, and they do a good job whenever they do. And having that that relationship with the students around them, building that collaboration helps a lot. Um, I don't know, there's so many things like, I, let's stay. like I just when you brought up the collaboration, yeah, it is so important. One. You know, so yeah. Mrs. Gaunt talked about yeah. the teamwork yep. just from a staff perspective, but think about your role mm -hmm. as a conductor to the students and making sure they're all working together. Yeah, a lot of people when they think they could, a conductor, they think I tell the kids what to do. It's really like right. a collaborative thing. Like yeah. we constantly talk about how we can improve what we can do. Like it's not just me telling them. So it's really like they're having to critically think about like, well, how do I improve? They're the ones having to set those goals goals to get to that end goal, which is usually our concert, but also goal setting, like figuring out how do I work out these problems. So problem solving is another one. There's just so much that happens in a band class and choir class and any right. music class, really. Uh, yeah. With that, let's talk a little bit about some upcoming performances mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. at Lakeside. What, what's it going to look like? Yeah. Well, as you guys know, winter concerts are yeah, coming. Yeah, here they yeah. are. Yeah, winter yeah. is coming. So are the concerts. And so... you're still smiling. So, yeah, that's uh, uh, Okay, once December hits that, yeah, okay. I told the kids December's coming, so this will kind of go away yeah. a little bit. Um, but time. all of our elementary, yeah, game time. Yeah, yeah. Our elementary concerts start like the first week of December. Then we have the high school concerts the second week yeah. of December. And then ours are sixth grade is December 18th, mm -hmm. six o'clock at Lakeside. And then our seventh and eighth grade, and this is band and choir together. 7th and 8th it. grade is on December 19th at 6 p.m. as well. So we, we're working right. hard. I'll yeah. make sure I have my girls. Okay. I want them, I uh, have my little girls come. We're playing so a song learn. that I think they'll love. It's called Santa the Barbarian. So Santa. get ready because there might be a barbaric Santa that might show up. Oh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> so I wish uh, you and the students the best with that. Thank you. And I know you have a grant opportunity mm -hmm. that uh, we were fortunate to receive. Yes. You want to talk a little bit about Mr. Uh, Holland's opus? Yes. I'm sure a lot of people have seen the movie. Uh, I don't know if it's as popular as it used to be. I remember. But yeah, yeah Mr. Holland's opus. So uh, the composer from Mr. Holland's opus actually started the foundation. So it was to provide um, schools with with high quality instruments. So we have a lot of instruments at our school, um, but they're starting to age. And after a while, aging instruments need to be replaced. Right. So this is a really good way for us to replace those instruments with high quality ones. Um, some of the instruments that have been on the market recently, especially like that are easy for our students to get, aren't always the best quality. So they break quickly, kids get frustrated. So I wanna be able to, to provide those instruments for them so they can have a good experience. And how much money are we receiving from the grant? We don't know yet. So kind of how it works is that it's kind of like a crowdsourcing thing. So they're going to make um, like a on their website a page for us and anybody can donate. But they're kind of going to help us find foundations that want to donate to us, okay. to our band program. And we are the only band program in New Jersey to have been chosen. So we're hoping that we can find some people who would like to donate and help their their local kids. Awesome. So, yeah. and I know we're going to put a link up of yes. how um, mm -hmm. our viewers can assist yes. with this. Yep. So, so once it's up and running, we plan to do that. Yep. Yeah, I love it. Um, so we're going to show a video, but before we get to the video, um, I do want to just, I think this is important. So you're doing a wonderful job. Thank All you. I hear is about, you know, uh, the, the work that's happening at Lakeside in the music program. So this is your chance to advocate what you need, what you want to see uh, for the future <laughs> in Millville. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So any help we can get from the community, we love it. We've gotten instrument donations in the past. Even if you have an instrument sitting in your closet, maybe your kid used to play and they don't play anymore, we'll take it. But right. really, just um, this gives the students of Millville an opportunity to do something that might not have been available before. So the more yeah. instruments we have, the more kids we can have in the program. Mm -hmm. So to give them those opportunities to 
learn life skills, to learn how to be a better person, a better collaborator, to build self-confidence, to me, that's what we want our kids to be so that they can grow up to be leaders. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So, and band does that. It sure does. Yeah. So don't ever hesitate. Continue to push, advocate yep. for just not of our students, but our entire program. Yep. So thank you, Erica. Thank you. I appreciate you being here. Yeah, nice so I know we are going to show the video that the students made. So yes. you, if you want to talk a little bit about that. Yep. So we got video? some of our eighth grade symphonic band students to just talk about what having uh, a school instrument means to them and, and uh, what it provides to them. Yeah. And I know you made that with uh, Miss Meg Finn. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it's a powerful video. So yeah. hopefully everyone enjoy the video and learn more about Mr. Holland's opus and how you can be a part of uh, the great happenings uh, in our band program. Thank you. Having a school instrument means I don't have to worry about getting a new school instrument at the beginning of the school year. And I'm very grateful to have an instrument from school because not a lot of people have money to get good quality instruments. I like being in band and having a school provider instruments because in percussion we have a lot of instruments to vary from. If everyone had to buy their own instruments, not everybody has enough money to. And some part, some families don't have enough money to provide for their students because it helps me get, get through my hobbies because I play the trombone as you can see right here. And there's not a lot of people who play the trombone. Ultimately having my own instrument not only fuels my passion for music, but also instills confidence and a sense of achievement. And band also helps me learn things faster, like how to be more creative because when I'm drawing and stuff like that, I can draw smooth like a rhythm that I can play. Having a school instrument has helped me better myself in many ways, like helping to think faster, think smarter, and make better decisions. Playing an instrument also fosters a sense of discipline as it encourages me to dedicate time and effort into master mastering my craft. Not having a school instrument would mean I'm not able to do performances or play in band classes with my friends. Band is also good because we practice for so long and when we get to have our concerts, our, we get to show our family how far we have made and how far our teachers have taught us. Yeah, I wouldn't be able to go to concerts, try marching band, I wouldn't be able to do any of that stuff if I didn't have an instrument right here. Having an instrument from school helps me a lot when I want to do outside activities like marching band. Being in a band is like having a separate family that supports everybody and shows for each other. It has also helped me make m more friends than I've had before, and having an instrument overall just makes me happy. So it makes me feel happy and grateful that I get to have instruments like this. For myself and the students at Lakeside, we just thank you so much for any support you can show us. It means the world to these students just to be able to have these instruments and to perform and to really do something that they love. Allen Associates is a family-owned and operated full-service agency, managing a broad base of clients in the New Jersey area. Allen Associates has been a leader in health benefits and financial services including health, prescription, life insurance, pension, 401k plans and estate planning. With more than 60 years of experience and a staff of highly trained and dedicated professionals, Allen Associates is noted for its ability to build strong, long-term relationships with our clients and the communities we serve. Give them a call today at 856-692-2250. Allen Associates, your complete health and financial services, Vineland, New Jersey. Hello, my name is Craig Atkinson and I am president of the Millville Thunderbolt Club. The mission of the Thunderbolt Club is to enhance the athletic experience of Millville High School student athletes. We provide a myriad of services for these athletes, including end of year recognition banquets for all teams, stipends for teams and individual athletes, college scholarships of $35,000 per year, meals for special events, as well as hosting the Mike Trout Millville Thunderbolt Club golf tournament and the Millville Sports Hall of Fame. Please visit our website at millvillethunderboltclub.com for additional information.
Welcome back to Inside the District. Once again, I'm Matt Mazzoni, Superintendent of Schools right here in Millville. Hopefully you enjoyed learning about Lakeside and just a thank you to Mrs. Gaunt and Mrs. Biaselli for joining us uh, to unpack uh, behind the uh, what I call the orange and blue, the great happenings here in Millville. Now, at this segment, we're going to look at our district updates. And the first thing I want to focus on is Meal Viewer. So this is a new web-based uh, service that we launched on our website for all of our families. And this is an important piece to it. So with this Meal Viewer, you're able to view menus online, learn about allergen information, nutritional information, and also you can identify your child's favorite meals uh, and when it's going to be served. So you can set up the profile for you and your child and just once again you can learn about this you can access it under the about us menu on our website uh, and or use the link on the screen so a lot of great things with the meal viewer next I would like to talk about our Atlas uh, curriculum platform so this is a new platform. This is the Cadillac version that uh, all school districts, if they're fortunate to use uh, in the country. So, you know, Atlas was just launched, launched this year for our families. And let me tell you a little bit about what Atlas is. So Atlas is a platform for our families, our staff, that you can observe, view all the curriculum that is being taught to your child. So even if you're a community member and you have a question of what, I wonder what the uh, third graders are learning in history uh, in comparison to when I was in school, you can learn about that. So you have full access um, to this curriculum uh, through our website. And of course, our curriculum is tied to the New Jersey student learning standards and you can learn about the different activities. And and you can see from the picture, it shows you uh, on a continuum of when students are learning, uh, what they're learning in September all the way through June. So, you know, go to our website under the tab of curriculum and take a look at Atlas platform for all of our curriculum. Uh, and you, you could definitely learn a lot of what we're doing uh, inside the district. One more update that I would like to get from the district and that we're very excited about is this program uh, called Varsity Tutors. So what is Varsity Tutors? So the students can access Varsity Tutors through their clever accounts. And this is giving a free tutorial. So free tutoring 24 seven. So if any of your children have questions at home and they need answers, they have the ability to log in through their clever account and they can go to varsity tutors and they can have a live tutor to assist them. Along with that, they can have uh, live group uh, classes and self study and practice problems. So this is just an additional resource resources for our students and families. So please uh, take advantage of this program as we do it. And I'm sure as the year progresses, we'll provide more information on Varsity Tutors. But once again, a free program for our students and families uh, that we're offering to everyone. So that is our district update. And we're going to come back in a minute and do some upcoming events. Thank you. Allen Associates is a family-owned and operated full-service agency, managing a broad base of clients in the New Jersey area. Allen Associates has been a leader in health benefits and financial services including health, prescription, life insurance, pension, 401k plans and estate planning. With more than 60 years of experience and a staff of highly trained and dedicated professionals, Allen Associates is noted for its ability to build strong, long-term relationships with our clients and the communities we serve. Give them a call today at 856-692-2250. Allen Associates, your complete health and financial services, Vineland, New Jersey. 
Hello, my name is Craig Atkinson, and I am president of the Millville Thunderbolt Club. The mission of the Thunderbolt Club is to enhance the athletic experience of Millville High School student-athletes. We provide a myriad of services for these athletes, including end-of-year recognition banquets for all teams, stipends for teams and individual athletes, college scholarships of $35,000 per year, meals for special events, as well as hosting the Mike Trout Millville Thunderbolt Club Golf Tournament and the Millville Sports Hall of Fame. Please visit our website at millvillethunderboltclub.com for additional information. Welcome back to Inside the District, and we're going to close and talk about the upcoming events that we have. Uh, so just a reminder to all of our families as we get ready for Thanksgiving break that Wednesday, November 27th is an early dismissal day for all students. Uh, there will be no afternoon latchkey or wrap services for that day. And also we're closed on the 28th. Thursday uh, for Thanksgiving, along with Friday the 29th uh, for Thanksgiving holiday. And just want to wish everyone a wonderful Thanksgiving. Ho hopefully you can share that with uh, family, friends, loved ones. Uh, a great time to be thankful uh, for many of the blessings that we have in our families. And with that, anytime now we're talking about Thanksgiving and Millville, that only means one thing, and that's the Turkey Day Classic. So this is the 152nd meeting between us and Vinelin. So this year it's taking place at Catone Stadium in Vinelin, and uh, gates are going to open at 930 with kickoff at 1030. Uh, and so a little different. So tickets will be sold at the gates and it's only cash only. So a little different than when uh, how we're hosting our game. So it's three dollars for adults and two dollars for students. And you know what I'm going to say at this time. Let's go bolts. Bring that victory home once again. Uh, and then and, and, I'm also going to close with our winter concerts. So I know uh, Ms. Biaselli spoke about our winter up, uh, concerts coming around the corner. So you can see on the screen all the dates that are coming. So our first concert is at Bacon Elementary, and that's going to be on December 4th. Uh, so a great time to come out with your families, even if your children do not attend. But if, if it's a great night out uh, to celebrate all the hard work of our students and a great night out for all families. So I want to remind you, all concerts are free for atten uh, to attend. So please come on out. And just in closing, thank you for uh, watching today. Be uh, behind inside the district. Hopefully you learned a lot of, about what's happening at Lakeside. Wonderful things. And you can hear about the great leadership and our teachers, all the different programs. There's not, you know, it's not a coincidence that they were identified as a national school of character. Uh, it's for all the hard work and their efforts that they're putting forth and for that team mentality that they're doing. So thank you, Lakeside staff. Thank you to all the Millville Public Schools and the teachers and administrators and staff. Um, we're looking forward. We'll be back next month, and we're going to start moving to the elementary schools. I believe we're going to highlight Rick Avenue Jets. So that's our next episode. Uh, in closing, I wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving, and we'll see you soon. Let's go Bolts. The preceding program was produced by the Millville Public School System in conjunction with Quinn Broadcasting and is available on Facebook, YouTube, and Channel 22.